E3 Harrowbecker, Ghent Webbergham, the Tour of Flanders and Paris Roubaix. These are the four most prestigious of the Cobble Classics and this video looks at the five riders who have made these unique races their own. There's no real surprise to see the cannibal on this list. The Belgian legend ate cobbles for breakfast, as well as mountains and pretty much every other race he rode for that matter, amassing 525 wins during his 18 year career as a pro. Now aside from the sheer volume of wins, the thing that differentiates Merckx from the other riders in this video is that he didn't specialize in the classics like they did. Because of his almost otherworldly physical abilities, he specialized at everything. His record of 11 Grand Tour wins still stands, and in addition to his cobbled wins, he won every cycling monument at least twice. His first success at the Cobble Classics came as a fresh-faced 21-year-old in the 1967 Ghent Webbergham, riding in the iconic black and white checkered kit of Peugeot, where he outsprinted an eight-man breakaway. The following season, Merck switched to the Faima team and landed his first cobbled monument in the form of Paris-Roubaix outsprinting his sole breakaway partner, Herman van Springle, in the Roubaix Velodrome, whilst clad in the rainbow jersey of world champion, only the second rider ever to do so at the time. He then went on to win his first Grand Tour, the Giro d'Italia, that very same year, underlining his supreme versatility. 1969 saw a wet and extremely windy edition of the Tour of Flanders, a race in which he destroyed the opposition with a typical show of strength attacking solo with 70 kilometers still to race, to win alone by five and a half minutes. This form continued and saw him take that year's Milan San Remo, Liège-Baston-Liège and, yes, and the Tour de France. 1970 saw him take his second wins in ghent webbergem and Paris-Roubaix en route to his first ever Giro Tour de France double. Was there anything he couldn't do? He scored another Ghent Webergen Paris Roubaix double in 1973 and in 1975 solo to his last ever Cobble Classics win in the Tour of Flanders, raising his arms in Mirbecke whilst in the rainbow jersey. The final Cobble total for Eddie? Three Ghent Webergems, three Paris Roubaix and two Tours of Flanders. What makes Johann Museo one of the greatest ever to have ridden across the Pave of France and over the Hellingen of Belgium isn't solely his tally of wins, although his cobbled trophy cabinet is pretty impressive, it was more the manner and the style in which he rode. Throughout his career, he raced with all the attributes of a true Flandrian, someone who, no matter how tough the conditions, never gives up and who is the character of a fighter. He constantly exemplified these qualities, but none more particularly so than following his terrible fall in the 1998 edition of Paris-Roubaix on the Forest of Arenberg, where he broke his left kneecap and the injury turned gangrene, leaving his leg perilously close to amputation. However, he fought back and resumed cycling after a long healing process, finishing third in the Tour of Flanders in 1999 and ninth in Paris-Roubaix, exactly a year after that awful crash. Then in 2000, he won Paris-Roubaix for the second time after a 44 kilometer solo ride. Upon crossing the finish line in victory, he lifted his left leg, pointing to his knee as a reminder of the injury that had almost ended his career two years before. Dizimu, or the Seagull as he was also known, turned professional in 1988, but didn't open his Cobble Classics account until 1992 when he took the E3 Police of Flandres, and followed that up in 1993 by taking a famous victory in the Tour of Flanders, wearing the black, yellow and red of Belgian national road champion. In 1995, his MGGB team merged with Mapai Class, forming the Italian-Belgian Mapai team that dominated the classics throughout the 1990s. That season, following his second win in the Tour of Flanders, the Flemish media gave him the nickname the Lion of Flanders and the following year he won his first ever Paris-Roubaix, ably backed up by his incredibly strong Mapai team, who took all three podium spots after breaking clear with around 85 kilometers to go. In 1998, only weeks prior to that near career-ending crash, he won GPE3 and followed that up by taking the Tour of Flanders for a record equaling third time. And his final classic victory came in 2002 in the 100th edition of Paris-Roubaix, a truly epic rain and mud soaked affair that saw Museo crush the opposition, riding away with 40 kilometers remaining and winning by just over three minutes. 
Third place on that day went to a 21-year-old Belgian named Tom Bonin. Mizeo's final cobble tally then, two GPE3s and three each in Flanders and Roubaix. Spartacus is only one of two riders in history to complete the Cobble Classic Double Double in winning both the Tour of Flanders and Paris-Roubaix in the same year, twice, occupying a rarefied place in the pantheon of classics legends alongside Tom Bonin. Cancellara's maiden classic success came in 2006 whilst riding for CSC on the biggest stage of all, Paris-Roubaix. He'd already shown excellent form with sixth in both Ghent Webergem and the Tour of Flanders, but it was the dominant manner of his victory in Roubaix that showed the world he was going to be a force to be reckoned with. On the Carrefour de Lab, he thundered away from a select group of riders and powered into the Roubaix Velodrome solo, just under two minutes in front of Tom Bonin. A classic star was born. In the 2010 edition of the Tour of Flanders, after already netting the GPE3, he famously rode Tom Bonin off his wheel on the iconic climb of the Mur de Herardsbergen, with a Herculean show of strength that propelled him to his first win at de Ronde. The Swiss champion then finished off his cobble campaign by winning Paris-Roubaix for the second time and completing his first double. Afiti went on to repeat again in 2013. In fact, you could actually call this achievement a double-triple as he won GPE3 in 2013 as well. In 2014, the double Olympic time trial champion won his final cobble classic, the Tour of Flanders, for the third time. His seventh monument win in a glittering career and placing him third on the all-time list of cobbled classics riders. Born in 1933 in Grobendonk in Belgium, Rick van Looy dominated the post-World War II era of the cobbled classics so much so that he earned the nickname the King of the Classics. Now aside from his prowess on the pavé, he was one of the most accomplished all-rounders of all time and in 1961 became the first rider in history to have won all five of the cycling monuments. Milan San Remo, the Tour of Flanders, Paris-Roubaix, Liège-Bastogne-Liège and the Tour of Lombardy. Armed with a blistering sprint, he won an astounding 42 races in 1965 for example, and the ability to absorb the punishment delivered by the cobbles on the rugged, often bleak terrain of Flanders and northern France, he was a force of nature. It was as if these classics were designed specifically for him. The 1956 edition of Ghent Webergem was his first win in a cobble classic whilst riding for Faima Gorera opening the door to an eventual haul of 12 Cobble Classics over his 18-year professional career. And his last win came in his penultimate season as a pro in 1969 in the GPE3, his fourth in that race. Now 83, the Emperor of Herentals, another nickname given to him after the Belgian town in where he lived, he sits second on the list of the greatest cobbled riders of all time. And here's why. In addition to the four wins in the GPE3, he won Gaint Webelgum three times, the Tour of Flanders twice, and took a hat trick of wins in Paris Roubaix. Tornado Tom burst onto the professional scene at the tender age of 21 as a neo pro, with an incredible ride to third place in the Queen of the Classics, Paris Roubaix, whilst riding for the US postal team. This standout ride saw him sign, controversially at the time, as he was still under contract, for Patrick Lefebvre's quickstep de Vitamont team, the squad he was to spend his entire professional career riding for. And what a career it was. After a difficult 2003 where he was beset with injury, 2004 saw the young Belgian quickly become a feared and respected force. He could ride the cobbles as if it was second nature, had incredible depth of endurance and was ridiculously fast in a sprint and his maiden win in a Cobble Classic came in the 2004 E3 Haralbecker. And only a week or so later, he had a gate Webelgum to his rapidly growing Palmares. 2005 saw Bonin take his first Cobble Triple with GPE3, the Tour of Flanders and Paris-Roubaix. And he capped off this stellar season by making a bit of history in winning the World Road Race Championships as well. The only rider to have won Flanders, Roubaix and the Worlds in the same season. From then on, he kept winning and winning, taking his second Flanders-Roubaix double in 2012 and hoovering up a quite incredible tally of 15 cobble classics throughout his 16-year career, making him the greatest cobble classics rider ever, three wins ahead of Rick Van Looy and six in front of Fabian Cancellara. 
So, five wins in the GP E3, three editions of Ghent Wevergem, three Tour of Flanders, and four Paris Roubaix. A record totally shares with fellow Belgian Roger de Vlaminck. And had it not been for Matt Heyman's powerful intervention in the 2016 edition of Paris Roubaix, where he finished an agonizing yet heroic second, Bona would be alone on five wins. Well, I hope you enjoyed our look at the Kings of the Cobbles. Now, for some more cobbled action, check out how to ride cobble climbs with the legend himself, Johan Museo.